We never know how our day will go when we start out each morning. For over 40,000 people each year, in just the United States, their day, and their life, ends with a fatal accident. The goal of this video is to describe a concern, that might lead to a strategy, to prevent a few thousand of these deaths, each year. This animation is intended to describe a potential limitation of current cervical spine stabilization practices and to stimulate the search for improved methods to protect the cervical spine of blunt trauma victims. When an emergency medical responder arrives at the scene, they are trained to appreciate that a cervical spine injury may have occurred. At the scene of the accident, there is no way to know for sure if the victim has a spine injury. Actions are therefore taken to protect the cervical spine, in case it is actually injured. Cervical collars are commonly used in the attempt to protect the cervical spine. At least 15 million collars are applied to trauma victims each year in the United States. Surprisingly, there is no scientific evidence that a collar can protect the cervical spine if it is actually injured. Almost all scientific testing of collars has been done on healthy uninjured volunteers. It is not possible to test collars on actual live trauma victims, who have a known injury, so researchers have tested cervical collars on cadavers with a cervical spine injury. These studies have all shown, that a cervical collar does not protect the cervical spine if it is injured, and may actually make the injury worse. This animation illustrates what has been learned so far through published, scientific experiments. Most cervical collars, that are intended to protect the cervical spine, are made of stiff plastic that wraps around the neck. The bottom of the collar presses against the shoulders, and the top of the collar presses against the base of the head. These collars are intended to keep the head from moving, by wedging this stiff plastic between the head and shoulders. Please note that the collar can press upwards on the base of the head. When the collar is applied to a person with an intact spine, a cervical collar will somewhat restrict motion of the head, since the intact spine is fairly stiff, and prevents the head from moving upwards. A person with a cervical spine injury is very different. Once the cervical spine is injured, it takes very little force to push the head away from the shoulders. The cervical spine is designed to keep the head attached to the body, and it does this job very well when it is not injured. When the cervical spine is severely injured, it can no longer keep the head properly attached to the body, and the head can move around very easily. The head weighs 15 to 20 pounds, and it is hard to keep it from flopping around once the cervical spine is severely injured. This animation shows how a cervical collar can act by pushing the head away from the shoulders if the cervical spine is injured. An injury is shown at the level of the first and second cervical vertebrae. This severe injury allows an abnormal gap to form between the vertebrae. This type of injury has been found in patients who survived this injury. When the head is pushed away from the shoulders, a gap can be created between the vertebrae of the cervical spine. In an intact spine, the gap between vertebrae is never more than 1 to 2 millimeters. When a cervical collar was applied to cadavers with cervical injuries, abnormal separation occurred at the site of the injury. This happened in every cadaver tested. This animation shows the average magnitude of the gap that occurred in the cadavers. The events that can occur when a collar is applied in the presence of a cervical spine injury are repeated several times to help appreciate the complexities of this phenomenon. If a collar is applied, and if it creates distraction at the site of a cervical injury, and if this distraction is maintained for an extended period of time, it may have a serious effect on the spinal cord. The spinal cord is normally kept healthy by a dense network of blood vessels, many of which are very intricate. The vertebrae, ligaments, and muscles that make up the cervical spine, normally are very effective at protecting the spinal cord. When this protection is damaged, the spinal cord is very vulnerable to injury. Scientific studies have shown that prolonged distraction of the spinal cord will result in ischemia and eventually necrosis of the spinal cord. The magnitude of distraction 
that has been shown to result in spinal cord ischemia, is less than what has been measured to occur, when a cervical collar is applied in the presence of a severe cervical spine injury. Notice how, in this animation, the color of the cord changes to depict the ischemia that may occur, when a collar is applied, if the collar creates and sustains distraction between vertebrae. This is repeated several times, to help appreciate the effect. Over 40 medical research studies have shown, in actual trauma victims, that abnormal distraction can occur in the presence of a severe cervical spine injury. The next few images are reconstructions of the cervical spine, created from CT exams of trauma patients who sustained a cervical spine injury, and arrived alive to the hospital. It is very important to know that a person can survive a severe cervical injury. Many very good medical studies have shown this. A cervical spine injury is not a death sentence if it is protected from any further injuries. It is also important to note that although cervical spine injuries are fairly uncommon, they may be more common than is currently appreciated. Multiple scientific studies have shown that at least 30% of people who die following blunt trauma have cervical spine injuries. Other studies have shown that, unfortunately, most of these injuries were not detected before the patient died. It is possible that several thousand of the more than 40,000 people who die each year in the United States following blunt trauma, might survive if the cervical spine is adequately protected during extrication from the scene and transport to the hospital, and if the cervical injury is identified and managed shortly after they arrive to the hospital.